no secret that gas prices are through the roof. Everyone's seeing this when they go to fill up their car with petrol. The Biden administration has directed gas companies, oil companies, to be producing more oil. Understandably, they've wound down their operation with less demand for their product. But the huge anomaly in all of this is that we're sending 500,000 barrels of oil a day to China. Yes, it's amazing, isn't it, how virtually all of the Biden administration's policies seem to assist the Chinese Communist Party. Why is that? Let's dig into some details. I'm Brendan Fallon. And I'm Lee Smith. And, and we're, we're Over, over the, the Target. Target. The Chinese Communist Party state media, the Global Times, recently unleashed a tirade of complaints against Republican Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio, the two anti, anti-Chinese Communist Party senators. It's attacking them for questioning the fact that uh, 500,000 barrels of U.S. oil a day are going to China. Like, yeah. this is something that, that shouldn't be questioned. It should just be accepted. Right. Well, I mean, they, they are. They're both China hawks, you know, Ru- Rubio and, and Scott. But just as significantly, I mean, all they're doing is they're writing legislation to stand, they're trying to push legislation to stand up for the American public. We're seeing gas prices at record highs across the country as people are looking on, at staying cool in the summer and as people are looking to stay warm during the winter. The idea that, <laughs> the idea that we're sending um, a half a million barrels a day to, uh, to the CCP is absolutely absolutely preposterous. So Scott and Rubio are correct to stand up and say, what's going on with the Biden administration? And again, it looks like so many of the Biden administration's initiatives are directed, uh, pointed toward benefiting the CCP. I know there's a number of examples that that fall into this category of these policies from the Biden administration that suspiciously accommodate the the Chinese Communist Party very well. And on this issue related to to gas, another one that comes to mind is the the recent solar panels. And Mm. Trump introduced these these tariffs during his presidency that dealt a a really severe blow to the Chinese Communist Party, really pulled them into line to a large degree. And now we're starting to see these, these tariffs be rolled back, and it's with the solar panel industry. Yeah, that's right. The tariffs, that's the one thing that the, that's the one instrument that the Trump administration had that was very, very effective, right? Trying to uh, not only even out the trade deficit, but trying to put the CCP on notice, right? And a lot of people, I spoke to uh, former Trump administration officials recently, and they said, as you and I have discussed, Brendan, they said, look, I think it's going to be very hard. It would be a a terrible mistake for the Biden administration to get rid of these tariffs. But I think it's going to be very hard for them to do it politically, everything with a Hunter Biden scandal. And again, this is from Hunter Biden's laptop showing very clear um, financial ties between not just Hunter Biden, but also the entire Biden, the entire first family and CCP affiliated businessmen. So they believed it would be hard to get rid of these tariffs. But no, the first set of tariffs that the Biden administration is moving against, as you said, are regarding these solar panels, which will now allow the CCP to flood this country with solar panels and further uh, disempower our clean energy industry. Remember what's going on here. The entire purpose of damaging the fossil fuel industry by limiting it is to increase the power of green energy. It's to usher in the age of green energy. But now, as it turns out, as we see, by getting rid of tariffs on Chinese solar panel manufacturers, the point is, is to introduce Chinese industry where we've created a gap where we've hurt American industry, we're creating room for Chinese industry. I understand before the tariffs that this had basically pushed a lot of American businesses in in this industry out of the market. And there's there's a really disturbing irony in this. This business is going to China and the Chinese Communist Party runs its operations without any regard to environmental consideration. They are the largest polluter in the world. And without any regard to um, occupational health and safety, working conditions, right. they have a, a huge, uh, huge labor market that's largely comprised of, of what we'd consider slave labor. We, right. This has been, and been shown on mul- multiple levels. Look, we have to start asking what's going on here. Everyone has paid attention to 
uh, Hunter Biden's laptop and Hunter Biden's connection with CCP affiliated businessmen. And, and this is important. It's not insignificant. Right. But uh, in a sense, it's almost a distraction at this point. Right. Because what's the real issue? The real issue is that the Biden administration, these are real policies that the Biden administration uh, is implementing that all go in favor of the CCP. This is very important. And, and you and I, as, as commentators, of course, we don't want to start wandering into Russiagate land where the Democratic Party and national security establishment officials were wrongly accusing Donald Trump of colluding with Russia. The difference here, uh, or, or the main difference, is not just the lunacy of people who are accusing Donald Trump of being a Russian spy without evidence, but the fact is that there were no policies under the Trump administration going Moscow's way. Right. Trump had sanctioned Moscow. Uh, Trump was extremely hard on Moscow. And here we're seeing something else. So the real thing we need to look at is not rumor, not innuendo, but the actual policies. Why are they benefiting the Chinese Communist Party? Another recent development on this front, Lee, which uh, you, I'm sure you're aware of, is that the, yeah. the Biden administration has endorsed an IP intellectual property waiver for vaccines, therapeutics and tests. This will apply for for low income countries, developing countries, mm -hmm. uh, allowing them. I think it, it was initially pushed forward by South Africa and India requesting that the, the normal rules that would protect the, the IP for this technology would be disregarded. Um, the idea was to allow them to these countries to get their their vaccines out and to be able right. to provide the services for people. The question of how effective that these particular vaccines are, that's a time for a, a question for another discussion, I guess. In either way, th this applies to developing countries. In the first draft of this waiver, it would have ruled out China. But this new resolution, it allows for China saying that uh, more or less gently encouraging them not to take advantage of it. I'll just, I'll read this to you. Those countries with existing capacity to manufacture COVID-19 vaccines, like China, are encouraged to make a binding commitment not mm -hmm. to avail themselves of this decision. Well, I, I don't have a lot of faith that, that the Chinese Communist Party won't avail themselves of, of this decision. Right. I mean, that's that kind of phrasing, unfortunately, we've become accustomed to over the last several decades. And right, Beijing totally ignores these sorts of things. And why should they? There are enforcement mechanisms, but no one wants to take action. And it's very important, I think, that we understand the same outfit, the World Trade Organization, right? It was China's accession to the World Trade Organization in 2001 that created the, um, the wealthy and dangerous uh, totalitarian state that we're now dealing with, right? The People's Republic of China. That's what enriched them. That's what put China at the center of the new world order, right? China became everyone's workshop. Everyone was manufacturing things in China to make money because it was on the cheap, right? And that's what's happened. That's where we have the China that we have now. And so when you hear American officials saying, well, we're worried about uh, the Chinese stealing, stealing our intellectual property, well, what's happened here, right? Now the Biden administration is saying, well, you know, we're not, we're so not worried about it here, just take it, right? It's the same thing the movie industry went through as well. The movie industry was worried about their movies being pirated in China. So what did they do? Instead of any, uh, instead of active enforcement, they went to the Chinese and they decided to make deals. <laughs> they decided to make deals with, uh, w with the Chinese film industry. Well, the Chinese wouldn't possibly steal from themselves now if we're giving them a cut. No, but of course, they have it both ways. That's precisely how it goes on. And again, what we're seeing in many ways now with the Biden administration is the culmination of these many years of not just American inattention, but American complicity with the CCP. And that's why we're seeing these different policies. When we see that these are bending uh, the CCP's way, this has become a habit in Washington, right? How do we accommodate our friends in China? And as you were saying, I mean, this, this goes back so far. It goes back to, I, I mean, at, at least the, the 1970s, there was the iconic visit by Nixon and yeah. Kissinger in 1972 to China. And we can show some of that footage. They opened up, they allowed China into the world trade um, environment. Something I saw that you wrote, you, you kind of inferred this, this perspective of the Biden administration. China is leading economically. It's leading on all these different fronts militarily. Mm -hmm. They've basically won already. So why don't we just go along with it? 
If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the full 20 minute plus version of this Over the Target episode on Epoch TV. There we can talk about the politics, the economics, everything that's going on without worrying about being censored or being canceled. Sign up for Epoch TV where you'll find Over the Target and all your other favorite Epoch TV shows.